Hello, welcome to this edition of Timeless Conversations. My guest today is a consummate communication expert, started a very brilliant career in broadcasting, moved on to what I would call diplomacy, right? Diplomacy with quotes. Yeah. Now, the quote is not that it is suspect. It's just that he would tell you himself that, okay, was, were you really in the diplomatic corps or not? He would tell you. And then up till today, he's still a specialist in communications. Please welcome with me, Oge Eboigwe. Good to be here. Thank Should you I very ask much. Epa? Epa Oge Epa. Eboigwe. Epa. Okay, a boy, Great. he will tell you what a pass stands for because most of those who are younger than him call him a pa. He's a beginning man to the core. Welcome. Thank you very much. Yes, it's a pleasure to have you. Your days in broadcasting, when you recall, what does it do to you? Mm. It's probably those days I remember that I more or less went back to journalism now. Uh -huh. retiring, retiring yes. from every other thing I've done. Yes. Um, it was special. Mm -hmm. For me, I was lucky, I think. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I was, I was recruited by Radio Nigeria in mm -hmm. 1978. Well, I wasn't really based inside Radio Nigeria Broadcasting House mm -hmm. all the time. A lot okay. of the time I was posted to run, you know, in the different, areas, and in different all places. The First, the correspondent. correspondent uh -huh. And then State House. Yes. Then the Foreign Ministry and all mm. that, and the diplomatic uh, system. Yeah. So a lot of the time I was out of BH. But the time I also spent on the desk in yeah. this room and mm. then producing news programs and mm. all that. Yeah. Uh, so it was a special time because mm. I studied journalism yes. uh, with a, a specialist in broadcasting. Mm. It was good for me. I enjoyed it. I had the distinction and uh, I think that was where Radio Nigeria came for yeah, me then. Yes. And um, I still enjoy it. Mm. It still seems to rub off my family, mm. my, my kids. Yes. Uh -huh. my, my, my daughter studied uh, mass communication and media technology too. Oh, good. She made a first class. Lovely. She's running her own show. My, my son works for a TV station okay. uh, right now. He didn't study uh, communication, mm -hmm. study sociology, but from school he developed interest in using his voice. He has a very deep voice. Okay. So he's a, he it's a good voice of artist. Yeah, voice over and all that. Yes. And then they saw him and they took him and said, man, come and be with us. Yeah. So, you know, the beauty of you recalling those different uh, correspondents, uh, duties you performed, different desks that mm. where you worked in, is that your face lit up as you were saying it. Yes. There is something about journalism or even broadcasting that it doesn't go away from you. It's part of you. Yes. You know, even at home, um, at that time, my voice wasn't. I didn't have a broadcast voice. Yes, I remember. Your, your, I, I remember those reports you used to voice. Yes. They were part of uh, the, the correspondence, uh, the correspondence reports, and reports, reports. And, and yes, yeah. yes. Um, I didn't. My, my voice was a regular voice. I even had a bit of accent. Yes. I'm from Benin. Yeah, it's normal. Uh -huh. Yeah. Once you know, I, well, I, I did a simple video a Voice of America. Yes. And once I was invited to DC, mm. um, and I was reporting from DC to Africa. Yes for a while. And one of those reports was heard by a director of West America who was traveling through West Africa, I think it was in Togo or Bene. Mm -hmm. And he called them back and I said, who owns that romantic voice? <laughs> by that, he meant that the voice was too low. It was too low. It wasn't a broadcast <laughs> voice. So I went into their studio and said, man, you guys are going to train me how, how to, to use do my this. broadcast voice. Yes. So now I can speak like regular voice, yeah. and, and then when I is broadcast punch time, it up. I can decide to. So <laughs> <laughs> that's one of the things we learned those days. Yes, uh, but yes. there are people like you mm. who just come up, like my son too. Yes, that voice yeah, just, just comes out. Yes. And all just, yes. And the, um, yes, it's natural, so it's, to speak. It is. It but is. But he, he, he was. I actually think that my son doesn't like me saying. Those days, those days, in those days, there's a value <laughs> point saying those days, those days, you know. But 
Yes, we are better those days. Well, comparatively. Yes. <laughs> comparatively. We didn't have the technology they have now. No. Uh, we, we didn't have uh, that access to, yes. to check anything. You anything. had to go into the thesaurus and read, 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 read. You they will be holding was, their phones and they don't even use you it. You know what it was to file a report those days. Oh, yes. And you send it. Uh, you want to spell Abe Okuta? Yeah. A for uh, Apple, yeah. B for... <laughs> B for Bob. Because the guy, he doesn't understand what you are saying. Yes, he has also. a radio system that the man is writing. Yes. Uh -huh. But these days... They just send it. Even there are apps that would uh, spell it out. Spell it out end, and yes. even transcribe the thing for you at sure. the end. And, uh, sure, sure, but, sure. Um, we, 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 I, I, with a few of my friends, we used to go to a place called NET those days. Mm -hmm. Hotel. Yes. When I was stringing for VOA. Yes. And we used teleprinter. Yes. Uh -huh. You you have to type the. You type it there. Yes. Printer, come, ta, 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 ta. Yes. You know, there was no email, mm -mm. no fax, no nothing. Yeah. There was no cable TV. None. But we did it. Yes, it was done. In fact, you know, when you talk about appliances or implements for performing your duties, then compared to today, they were so limited. If you are a reporter. And you have a midget. Yes. Oh, you are. Uh, before the midget came, the you are. Uh, that you carry. You remember that? <laughs> you carry. You remember that? Yes, that yeah. you carried around yeah. and then you would be punching your yeah. microphone mm -hmm. into somebody's the front face. Yes. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> but today they will just hold their phone, put oh, it down yeah. somewhere, and then it's so sharp, it's the recording sharp. comes out it clean comes out and clear. And you uh, understand? You don't need to even narrate, be, be writing and no. transcribing. No, you just mm -mm. put the app on it. And, and then you, you can even send it as a, as a voice note, so, straight. And whoever is at the end, the other end knows what take, to do with it. Everything. So if you would look back, you, would you say technology has helped us in terms of performance? Oh, yes. I mean, things are easier. Technology mm -hmm. has helped the world yes. in every way. Yes. In banking, mm -hmm. in whatever business you are involved in, oil and gas, mm -hmm. in broadcasting. Mm -hmm. But many people are afraid now that very soon artificial intelligence will take over, we'll take over broadcast yeah. jobs. Mm -hmm. Although some of us think that AI will basically enhance it. It will enhance it. Do, I believe that. Too. Uh -huh. you know, there will still be room for people to, to make use of the tools themselves. So, of course, those. those Tools that are there now make things easier for you know the world to run, mm -hmm. and I think we should all you know key into it. There's nobody who should still say he's a dinosaur, he's an ancestor, and that he can't learn mm -hmm. technology and all that. No, I think it's a thing of the mind actually. Yes, you just put your mind to it, it and, and then you, you do you you you, yeah. you move on. Yeah. Now, when you left Radio Nigeria, was it like? I'm done with broadcasting, or I want to open a new vista for myself. Well, uh, at the time I was back in broadcasting house after having, you know, served in the foreign ministry. Mm -hmm. I was seconded the foreign ministry during the tenure of uh, Ibrahim Kambari and yeah. Elijah Akiemi yes. as the diplomatic correspondent. I was also covering the diplomatic missions mm -hmm. from there, and uh, got used to the different embassies, doing a lot of things for them, and. But I was I came back to BH producing a program called Insights, Insights New yes. Behind the News. Um, it was a beautiful program, but for somebody who likes to go out there to get the news for himself, he's been a field person. Yeah, you, you like to um, you know get the news rather than coming to look at what somebody else had covered. Mm. Um, I just thought I had gotten to you know the you know limit at that time. I was mm. a senior editor, level yeah. ten. Yes, you know so and. The guys who knew that I was in the diplomatic system, mm -hmm. because covering the diplomatic embassy, diplomatic missions, you get to meet the different uh, diplomats and all yes. that, attend their diplomatic league uh, parties mm -hmm. and all the time. And somebody told me, ah, the Canadians needed a, an information uh, mm -hmm. for officer to run their information system, and they were collecting CVs and all that. So I gave them my CV, called us for an interview, mm -hmm. and um, who interviewed me and they said, oh, man, come. A few mm. of my friends were at the interview too. Yeah. And they said, I should come. I, I was an information officer. A few months, then they decided to convert it as public affairs officer mm -hmm. because the job entailed much more than information uh, circulation to yes. newspapers and all that. Relationship with the different uh, agencies, mm -hmm. universities and all that. 
that's how I got into public affairs, mm. public relations, mm -hmm. for which I'm a fellow now. Yeah. Uh, and um, I spent about five years doing public affairs work for the High Commission. A lot of it, education counseling was also there, mm. you know, helping Nigerian students get scholarships mm -hmm. uh, to Canadian universities. But then, uh, uh, an opening came up in the Canadian Trade Commissioner Service. Mm. Uh, the Trade Commissioner Service uh, houses experts who know about trade, mm -hmm. connecting Canadian businessmen with Nigerian businessmen. Mm. Canadian companies want to do business in Nigeria, they signify their interest to the High Commission here. We have them in a database. When Nigerians, there are Nigerians who want to do business in Canada too, we so you, so you link, 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 them. link them together. Mm -hmm. Things were much easier then. Mm -hmm. um, there was no not as much mistrust mm -hmm. um, between those foreign those countries and Nigeria mm -hmm. as, as the case may be at this time now, you know. But so it was much easier. Mm -hmm. I joined uh, them and it was a beautiful time I, I, I spent there. Was the pay uh, good? Yes, as I said, it wasn't the, m too much different between what I was getting from radio. Radio, I was earning about 880,000, mm. 80 naira, yeah. naira per yeah. month. Yeah. Uh -huh. I was on level 10. The Canadians were giving me a equivalent of 1,000 naira. This was in 20... No, uh, 1987. 1987, okay. Yes. And um, 1,000 naira, and oh, I decided that that first month, I was going to spend that 1,000 naira. I was single. Mm. I had a car. You know, so... We close at three o'clock, like civil servants. I would drive to National Theatre. Those days there was Federal Palace at National Theatre. Mm. There are two movie bands at National Theatre on weekdays, mm. 5 p.m. and I think 7 p.m. I will have lunch at Federal Palace at National Theatre. I'll go for the first movie at five, mm. go for the second movie at seven, oh, yeah. and then go home. I lived in Sulere, mm -hmm. National Theatre. Mm. At the end of that month, I didn't finish 1,000 Naira. 87? Yes. Mm. I did not finish 1,000 Naira. No. I mean, those, how much will you need to, to you fear your car? That's very true. When I bought the car in 1982, by the way, I, I picked up my car. I was in radio. Mm -hmm. I went to Volkswagen. Yeah. I, on the line, the cars mm -hmm. were there. Mm. The color. Yeah, this is the one. Monaco I blue. Yes. Is what I wanted. Yeah. I paid, it, it was about 6,000. At that Naira, time. Yeah. You know, and... It was four, th four naira to fill the tank. Mm -hmm. A year after they increased it, it became seven naira <laughs> to fill the tank. Fill that the was tank. The, so I would drive them <laughs> from work, go to the theater, enjoy myself. I didn't spend, finish 1,000 naira mm. then in a whole month. Yeah. But I said, okay, it's good. You know, <laughs> let's see how this life will be. And you know, all, all Sudere boys those days, we yes. enjoyed as well. A lot of friends, we yes. had parties yes. on Friday, yes. Friday night, boogie night. It yes. was well, quite interesting. Mm -hmm. um, but it was good. Yes, and the stress was much, much reduced. Of course, it was. Uh, um, <laughs> well, there was this stress. Mm. You want to make more. Yes. Because I, 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 in the beginning, I, you know, when I left radio, Part of the thing I was doing radio, I was stringing for VOA, like I said. Yes. Um, I was still stringing because so when I was in the High Commission. Mm. Until one day, I had a friend who was working in the account section in the American Embassy. And he called me, Marcelino, to say, Okay, I'm just seeing some of our vouchers here. Somebody bearing, okay, boy, boy, the American Embassy. And I said, Hey, I was paid by the American Embassy in Paris, mm. but they were send the voucher to Lagos. I said, one day the American ambassador will be discussing with the Canadian High Commissioner <laughs> saying, ah, we have one young man who's working for us. For us who is, uh, okay, so that's how I stopped singing Stringing for, for view, view, yeah. Because he obviously wasn't Yeah, there the was guy. some, yes, but, some conflict. You know, so as I stopped <laughs> three years into my, my stint, <laughs> Well, a lot of us were stringing those days. Of course. Um, I don't know if they still do it these days. Mm -hmm. uh, they still do multitasking. it. Multitasking. They still do it. can't depend on just one source no, of income. No, multiple sources of income. Uh -huh. I don't encourage anybody to this. Yes, this, multiple this, streams. One, one, one multiple. source of income. Yes. So for all the young people out there, they have to make sure that they 
there's backup. I do think some of these young people can teach us a thing or two. Or two. Yes. <laughs> I think you are so. telling me. They're used to doing their thing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, you know, in your stint in the diplomatic uh, service mission, yeah. or mission, what did it expose you to in terms of uh, inter in international relationships and, and all that and business? You know, interest is key to every country. Hmm. When countries take decisions, primarily is based on their interest. Mm -hmm. No country is going to do anything for you hmm. if it does not add Benefit something them. to them. Yeah. yeah. No, but we seem to misunderstand. Ah, these people are coming to help us. Mm. They will give us aid and all. I'm sure that the U.S., the Canadians, the U.K. people would not be sending aid to Nigeria if they haven't tied it to something. Mm. That is some of the things we need to look at. Because now I know that the Chinese are involved in providing a lot of aid to mm -hmm. many, you know, countries and in Africa. In uh, I'm sure many of those countries think that it's, it's free money. Mm. I'm sure the Chinese will tie it to something. They have and, to. Um, and because I, I hear that um, some big infrastructure in some countries are tied to some of these loans. So time mm -hmm. will come when those people want to collect. They will collect. And they cannot pay back. <laughs> so they will <So>, possess. <laughs> so they, 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 they are no permanent enemies like they said in yeah. foreign, in foreign uh, international relations, relations. permanent interest. Mm -hmm. So those we should know too. We should also apply it from yes. our end. Yes. Um, that no country is going to give us any free lunch. Yes. Make sure that you Play your own part. Yes. Play your own role. Be prepared to ensure that you are so pushing your interest when the push comes to shove. Mm -hmm. You know, that, that a lot of things we need to learn from it. Mm -hmm. um, those days, some people say, "Ah, well, you can't be siding with the Canadians. You can't be doing this." But I was working for the Canadians. Yes. You know, the first. Let me tell you some. I mean, I feel one of the first things I had to do when I was working the Canadians. Remember the name Ben Johnson? Yes. I mean, he was like a, a god, so to speak, yes. to us in the mm -hmm. High Commission. We were pushing him. Yeah. Ben Johnson, Angela Sayenko was a woman mm -hmm. who was also a sprinter. Yes. And we, but when the Seoul Olympics final, and he won, we, mm -hmm. and then the drug thing came, yeah. it hit us very badly. Badly, because we were really pushing, and everybody was rooting because we have pushed him. Mm -hmm. You know, so there are also times when you push, and when something like that happens, you now have to develop some, you know, mm -hmm. programs to ensure that you sort out those problems. Yes, that is part of what I, I enjoy in public relations. Mm -hmm. There's what we call issues management. Mm. You know, I am. Yes. Um, not in Nigeria, I am in Mambandu. <laughs> issues management, we don't do it much in our system. Yes. You know, before you increase the price of a product, for instance, mm -hmm. you must get some specialists to check what will be the reaction of the end users who are going to use it. Mm. Even for those who are going to sell it, yes. what will be the reaction? But nobody seems to be thinking about that. And it happens to us all the time, especially mm -hmm. in our, uh, even with the governments. And all, nobody thinks, okay, we're going to increase the price of uh, petroleum. Mm -hmm. well, would there be a backlash? Even if you're going to do a positive thing, you're going to increase salary. What will be the issue that will arise from, from that? From it, yes. But people don't seem to think about it. But a lot of foreign countries think about a lot of all those things, especially in their international relations. Mm -hmm. If we invade Iraq today, what is going to happen? Yeah. The the only reason where you see big backlash is where that government has not thought about so what will true. happen. Mm -hmm. You know, but I think we ought to you know include such in our government system, in our business system, even in our private system. Mm -hmm. You know, if you develop personal governance rules for yourself, yes, how is it going to affect other people? Uh, okay, I don't want to. I don't go out after 6 p.m. Mm. for this, this this reason. 
or something will happen that will put you outside at so 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 time. Mm -hmm. Or you come from a flight from Abuja like for two p.m. and it moves to seven p.m., eight p.m. What are you going to do? <laughs> you are going to cancel the flight. Yeah. You are going to book a hotel at the airport at here. The airport, yes. So you don't. So a lot of those things, how to manage such issues that will develop. We need to put it into our own system. But trying to put it into our system calls up uh, the issue of willingness to submit to superior argument. Many times, the leadership has not or doesn't portray the willingness to listen or submit because to superior argument. Because they are defensive. They want to defend everything they have done because they didn't plan on what the backlash or, or, or even the positive thing that will come out of it. Mm. Why won't you submit to superior argument if what, why you, the reason for taking that decision is for the good of everybody? Yes. It's when you have a selfish interest mm. that you will not submit to you know, superior uh, argument in any situation. Mm -hmm. If you are on the level and you have explained your position to all sides to that particular issue. Mm. People can actually understand. You know, people have issues with journalists, for instance. Oh, yes, they journalists do. don't always understand, so we will need to, they will tell lies to cover some of those things. Mm -hmm. It's more difficult now. Yes. Because online, you can get you can fact internet, check. The internet can. It never forgets. <laughs> <laughs> the internet doesn't forget. <laughs> yeah. You just go there and oh, they bring it out. Yes. You, can't, you can't deny, oh, I didn't say that I was misquoted. Just go, hmm. and the guy puts it up. Yes. So it, now, as a practitioner of communications, where do you see Nigeria going in terms of, one, development, two, uh, opportunities for the younger generation, and three, uh, the older generation setting a good example? Let me talk about broadcasting. Yes. You know, it's like a free for all right now. Yeah. Um, I know that, I me mean, before we came on there, you were talking about training and all that. Yes. I'm not sure how much training is being done now before people are mm, put on there, yes. Uh, I, I, the way it looks like, guys just come and say they are on their personalities mm -hmm. mm. and just go rapping. <laughs> but I know there are a, a couple of stations run by some of our old colleagues. Yes. You don't go on air mm -hmm. except the thing is scripted. Yes. And you have read it mm -hmm. and you're not gonna go there and stumble. Mm -mm. But it doesn't happen yeah. that way obviously these days. But you know, broadcasting is a profession where you can't hide. Mm -hmm. If you make a mistake everybody sees everybody sees it and um, it's left for you to see how you are going to start scrambling to make there. amends but you see we come back to technology is there to help all of us mm. a, stu a studio you can run a whole a radio station from this one portal cabin yes um and i have an engineer call me once in a while to check the lines and all mm -hmm. and in fact some of those lines can be checked Remotely, remotely days, oh yeah, sure. So it doesn't even need to come. Mm. But you can even your this day they say in your bedroom you can actually even broadcast. There are mm. citizen broadcasters, citizen yes, journalists, no. and everything. All those who run podcasts and, and all that. From there, and it's making people happy. Mm. But the issue of training is very key. Mm -hmm. Everybody needs to be trained in what they are going to be involved in. Nobody will go to uh, the bank mm. and say I'm a banker. I'm mm. an accountant, mm. and he goes working. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Nobody should come into broadcasting without being trained on what it is you are going to do there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. At least when I'm talking about broadcasting, I'm not talking about the allied uh, services like human resources, no, and no, engineering, no, no. and all yes, that. Yes, it's core presentation, yeah. and reporting, production, and, and all, that. And all yeah. that. You know, so th there ought to be training. But I think the you know from you and I, mm. people. Veteran broadcasters who belong to the different broadcasters associations and mm -hmm. guilds mm -hmm. to ensure that their voices are heard mm -hmm. and they also contribute their own quota to helping or train the younger generation, the younger generation mm -hmm. in ensuring that the content that we put out there is what will help the people 
to understand the information you are trying to pass. Okay. Through. Okay, I'll t we'll, we'll, we'll take a break now. When we come back, we'll go back to the second part of that question, yeah. which is, as a communications person, where do you see Nigeria going as far as even the younger generation understanding the concept mm -hmm. of promoting national things? Yeah. Please stay tuned. <laughs> It's still Timeless Conversations with Oge Egboigwe as my guest. I asked because you're, you're even an elder now, so you are a confirmed, <laughs> you are a confirmed old man. <laughs> Where do you think we are going with the youth, making them see the positive things that can be done about our country, especially with so many of them traveling, though I think that's overstated. Not so many young people have gone, but a lot have gone. Yeah. Yes. The, the truth is that many of us so-called elders, mm. whether in business or in political life, have made the wrong statement with our chances and our lives mm. as to what is good for our country, the direction the young people should take. Sometimes you see cartoons and you say, young for you, what do you want to be in the future? Mm. Nobody will say they want to be a broadcaster mm. or even a banker. Mm. Some want to be politicians. Mm. They want to be assembly member yeah. or minister. Yeah, even some extreme ones will say, I want to be an arm driver. Yes, because some want to be petrol station attendant. Yes. Because they know that during fuel scarcity, <laughs> those guys make money. Yeah. So the issue of money is yeah. like it's what everybody sees. Mm because we are not querying where the money is coming from. Those days, anybody who has money, I'm sure that if you were to take a Mercedes-Benz to your dad those days, uh -huh. and they'll ask you, where did you get it? These days, the dads will be jumping. Yes. You know, I, I hear that they even have association of Yahoo Yahoo boys in uh, one of the states. Yes. You know, uh, well, their mothers, mothers, yes. mothers of Yahoo boys. And the mothers are saying, is it your money they are stealing? Is it Oibo people's mm -hmm. money? You know, we have, you know, gone so low, much low that uh, money is like everything. Mm -hmm. If you don't have money, if you don't have flashy car, you don't have a big house or big houses, you haven't made it. Mm -hmm. And that is the message we have sent to the young people. Mm -hmm. So part of the fault is us. Yes we have not set the right example for them. Mm -hmm. And so the, to solve this problem, we also have to be the one that mm -hmm. should set that example. Yeah. Ask, when these people, these young people are also making their money now, mm -hmm. at least ask them now, how? Yeah. Yeah. How did it come about? Mm -hmm. Not just because the, man, the, the young man has bought you a, a nice car or is riding this. Some young people have three, four cars. Mm -hmm. What do you need it for? Yeah, but uh, that, that that wasn't an issue when we were growing up. If yeah. you had a car, you had a car. Yeah, and um, you just move on. If you want to change it, it's a different thing. Mm. Change it and sell. You sell the other sell, one. Sell the other one. I know guys those days, and you can take the car to that place and sell it that same day and buy another and one. Buy another one. Just, yes. but now it's to accumulate, you know, or acquire mm. lots of them. We we have set the wrong example. And we, the elders, mm. we need to, you know, think back on the wrong things we have done. And we have a lot of work to do to mentor our young people. Mm. Lots of them actually want to be mentored. Yes. And many of us are not coming out mm -hmm. to mentor them. Mm. I know some young people who want, who, they write letters for people they think can mentor them. Can mentor them. Uh, I think some of us think we don't have the time to do it. In fact, that's, that, that brings to mind, once people get old or retired, the next thing they say is, I don't have time. I just want to be at home. How, what, what would you recommend for someone to do? I, I don't know how those people do it. Yeah. I mean, 
I, I left radio in 87. Yeah. I left the Canadian system in 95. I left UBA in 2005. Mm. From 2006, and now I'm still working. Yes. I run my own businesses. Mm -hmm. I run businesses and NGOs for people and all that. Mm -hmm. What time will you have to say you you are staying back, you want to enjoy yourself? This is that is even now you have more time. You can structure your yourself yourself to provide time for when you can mentor people. Because it's, you have to give back. Mm. I'm sure the society has given to you so during much. the time you are saying, God, that time, I mean, at least I still say that time was easier for us, mm. even though we still complain and all that. Yes. That time was easier. Mm -hmm. What have you contributed? You're thinking about go home every day or you're watching after the program, think, what have I contributed to the society mm -hmm. at my age now? Whether you are 40, 50, 60, or 70, what have I contributed? Who is it among these kids who look up to me? Have I mentored? In the disability community, which of those areas have I you know, played a major role? I've been in the blind community for over 30 years, mm. helping to train blind people to read and write and use technology and all that. Mm -hmm. And the same thing, technology has also made things easier for them. Yeah. But a lot of people out there don't even know mm. that you know you can use technology to make a blind person almost see. It's not seeing. Yeah. You know what I mean, he can run his laptop. He can run his life. They can run their lives. Their lives. I mean, a lot of our staff who are blind come from Ikorodu to Yaba to the mm. blind center on their own. Mm -hmm. They ride buses. They ride uh, bikes, mm, and they yes. ride uh, whatever kind of transportation, and they go back home. Mm -hmm. As long as they have their guide cane, yes, you know. Right, cane that people are supposed to know. Yes. So, but you, who think you are able, what role have you played to ensure that those people who need assistance, whether they are disabled or not, they are young, they need assistance. They need to learn from where you are coming from. Mm -hmm. How can we make our life that is now better than what it was before? Mm. Because face it. Things are going to get worse before they get better, mm. from all indications. Mm. So, you and I that are on the street will be the one that will be consumed mm. when anything is going to happen. So, the earlier we start doing something to help these young people, the better. Let's talk a bit of politics. Young people going into politics now, what kind of example would you see as having motivated them to go in there? It's not all of them that really want to serve. Nigerian politics is monetized. Hmm. And so uh, practically everybody who is going into it is going to it for the money or the power. Hmm. You know, or both. Good. So when you talk about someone is going to serve, hmm. the others may just be laughing at him. What is, it, what is he talking about? Mm -hmm. Because when you see the way that uh, politicians are recycling themselves mm -hmm. from different positions, there are some people who have never, you know, done a business in their life. Mm -hmm. They have been government picking from the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> Local government, state government, yes, uh, House of Reps. Are, are for reps. Senate, Senate governor. The governor, and then they now and they can come the back government. again. Yes, you know, just been for forty years. Yes. they are on it. But you see, in the U.S. system that we copy, the man who is a senator, if he's, he's a senator, is a senator. Yes, he uses his experience as a senator. Mm -hmm. He's not recycling mm -hmm. for so, monetary. No, in fact, when you check his bank account, you actually see. That little or nothing. He, man, he, say, he, he has a mortgage, he's paying, you know, he hasn't finished paying it for the past 30 years, mm -hmm. and he's, he's, you know, he's, paying, he's paying his taxes and everything. But it's not the same here, mm -hmm. because when people say they are sharing millions of naira or sending email to the boxes of members of the assembly for Easter or for Christmas, mm -hmm. you know, whatever that email contains, uh, we don't know. Yeah, but well, then you, yeah, but you see again, the quality of reportage is also key. The recent brouhaha about uh, padding of uh, what's it called? That was 
wrongly reported because nobody actually took money. What happened was they actually asked for constituency, yeah, uh, yeah, whatever. yes, whatever, mm -hmm. and provisions that that be added to it. Mm -hmm. Is that padding? I do not want to get into the issue of padding or not. <laughs> I, I know that, I mean, well, I'm aware that from what people have written, yes. I have not covered National Assembly as a journalist, those that I did not. Yes. But I'm told that when people go to defend their budget and they pass, some people come to see them after. To okay, say, the committee member. Uh -huh. yeah, this is for the committee. And you, know, all uh -huh, yeah. you know, that kind of thing. Yes. I mean, it means that some people will have whispered to that agency because they had something for the committee member. So, mm -hmm. Otherwise, if they just put what the agency needed, there will be nothing to share with uh, any member of any committee. But then that, that, that means that we, we have a really long way to go because, like you said, monetization of politics yeah. is real it's, in Nigeria. It's money. And the, anybody who's going to it and doesn't also have money, cannot succeed, mm. except he has somebody bankrolling him, and it's still the same money. Mm. Whoever is bankrolling him may not be bankrolling him for his free. Yes. He probably is expecting some, some returns. Back, you know, well, in forms of contract, in mm. terms of... Um, Patronage. Because usually, even when the politicians, they seem to have intermarriages and all that, between mm. their kids too. Yes. Uh, so it's an entrenchment of their <laughs> permanent there, interest. Yeah, interest is there. And... Um, it will be difficult for a, an easy-going youth mm. to come out. Look at what happened in Senegal. Oh yeah. Uh huh. You know, to come out and say, "I want to contest against this person," without somebody providing. If we just, if we just check the the how much you used to take from mm -hmm. contesting election from the party. Mm. You know. And you have to belong to a political party. Yes. Because right now, at least, I don't think they've had any independence. No, uh, no, no, no. That's so, not, it's not being approved. Yes. I think it's so, beyond that discussion at the National Assembly. You have to Assembly. belong to a, a political party. Yeah. They have a long list of fees to pay, take a form, express interest, do this and all. If you are somebody who just finished university, you've done your youth service, and you started working for two or three years, mm. even if you are a banker, Another like gas person, how much will you get to take a form? The pro former president said he didn't have money to take a form that somebody got it. Somebody company. got it for him. We'll have to take a break now. When we come back, we'll delve more into the things that represent Ogie Eboigwe. Stay tuned. <laughs> Yes, we're still with Ogie Eboigwe. You're somebody who loves to write. I do. Yes. Why do you write? You know, if you do not write... Mm -hmm. As a writer, not all of us write. Well, some of us speak. Mm -hmm. I speak. Yeah. But I also write. Yes. I like to put things down, down in black and white. Black and white, I yeah. Mean, maybe not with pen and paper. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And when you have ideas just flowing through your head mm. and there are things happening in the environment, in the society and all, and you just keep quiet, mm -hmm. you have to write about it. So you need to write. To write. Okay, now, your latest book is called A Pa Don't Come. A Pa Don't Come. A Pa Don't Come. An Odyssey with the Elder. Okay. And you wrote it in Pigeon? No. The title is in Pigeon. Yes. Yeah. What's the heart of that book? Now, I, I've been... I run a blog for about five years. Mm -hmm. The title of the, the name of the blog is epa.com. Okay. And the URL is epa.com.ng. Dot ng, yes. Yeah. Now, epa.com is a, we call it a wisdom blog. Okay. Uses my experience mm. to analyze different issues that happen okay. in, the, in the society. Okay, so from experience as an elder and all that, we use the experience of a pa to analyze the different issues. Okay, so generally, this book is 
it's a compilation uh -huh. of articles yes. in the blog. Yeah. Not all of them, just a yeah, few. Just a compilation. Just a few, yeah. yeah. Yes. A few interesting articles. Okay. There are different segments. How much is one book? And we, where can we get it? I will probably have to send you the, the Kindle uh, link. Okay. Well, we, we had the launch, the long version. We haven't uh, reprinted the shelf version. Oh, okay. The launch version is what we had. Is what you had. We, we, we can't use the amount we used to um, <laughs> print the launch version for the shelf for version. The, it will be too expensive be for too expensive. people. So we okay. need to make it to come okay. down All right. for the reprint. Now, at 70, how do you feel? You don't look 70, by the way. Well, why? My gray, my hair is gray. My yeah. beard is gray. Yes, uh -huh. you're older than me. You are eight yeah. years older than me. Yes, yeah, and I have gray. <laughs> I so gray, it's not gray, about gray. gray. You know, I, I, I wish I could say I feel like thirty, but I mean, I don't think I, I, people say age is just a number and all mm. that. It, it, it can be a number to many of us. Mm. Um, you look forward to fifty, sixty, seventy, and all that. Three score years plus ten, Abi. Mm, uh -huh. In one part of the Bible. Uh, yeah. In yeah, another part, it says one twenty. No, those are old days. Old days. <laughs> you are an old man uh, now. So, <laughs> but at least, I, I, I wish to feel that I'm 30, 40. Yeah. Except that sometimes when you get home at the end of the day, you need somebody to rub a boniki at your back <laughs> to make it uh, easy for you to sleep well. There, yeah. you are, there you have him at his best. Easy to talk to. Easy to listen to. Wisdom par excellence. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, okay. Thank for you. coming. Great to be here. I'll everybody. call you again though. Go ahead. You go come. Uh, I'll send you a bill. <laughs> no problem. Uh, it's been Timeless Conversations. My guest today has been Oge Eboigwe. Thank you for watching. See you next time. Thanks.